Hi everyone, welcome to the Homegrown Artist. Today we are doing another art journal spread in our YouTube art journal. And uh, I'm just putting some paper in the back to protect the pages behind it because I'm fixing to use gesso with this Simply Simmons, um, I think it's a inch half brush, inch half brush, an inch flat brush. And I'm just using generic gesso from Hobby Lobby. That's like the closest art store to me, so a lot of my stuff comes from there. And just putting enough on the page and spreading it around and doing the same for both pages. And sorry you can see my nappy hat head throughout this entire video. So I think in future videos I, I'm going to zoom in enough that y'all can see what I'm working on on the art journal and maybe not so much of the surroundings. I tried to in this video make it to where you can see kind of the supplies that I was working with, but um, yeah, I'd rather you not see my head. And then just heat setting that real quick, and I had cat hair in there, which happens when you have cats that like to sleep on your art de desk and sometimes knock over water and do all kinds of bad things. Evil cats. But I love them. All right, so that is heat set now. And uh, I'm getting two different sheets of paper because the gesso on the other sheets were was uh, still wet. And then um, picking out some Dilutions Colors paints to use. So I chose lemon zest, so a cool yellow. Um, I thought I was gonna do bubble, bubble gum pink, but then I switched to um, funky fuchsia. So a cool red, and then a cool blue, our vibrant turquoise, it's kind of like a greeny blue. And I also have my spray bottle with water and some isopropyl alcohol. I'm using 91% just because it's what I found for 88 cents at Walmart, and uh, they didn't have any other, but you can use like 70% or 100%, whatever you want to use. You can even use ethanol if you want to. So I just misted the art journal page and um, I'm spreading the Dilutions paints around and I'm wanting it to be pretty wet um, because for the alcohol effect to actually work on the art journal page, you need it to be very wet. Not like um, dilution sprays type wet, but Pretty wet. How many times did I just say wet? And now I'm taking a toothbrush. I put some alcohol on the cap and it's slowly draining out of the cap onto my hand, so I just quit messing with the toothbrush. And then heat setting that. I'm not going to show you the whole process of heat setting it. And then I'm using Art Basic Soft Matte Gel, and uh, I spray, accidentally sprayed the soapy water bottle in there from my jelly plate, so I cleaned that off and then sprayed just regular water in there and mixed it up, just because I wanted to create like um, kind of a binder to go in between the layers of paints rather than actually using the gel medium. It would have worked by itself, but um, I didn't want to waste the gel medium. It's not necessary to have it that thick. So this is kind of like an acrylic binder and just blending that around and then of course uh, I cleaned off the um, lid. I wouldn't normally do that but I had gotten yellow paint in there. I didn't want that for the next layer. It would have kind of muddied it up a little bit. So heat setting that. The binders and the gesso dry a lot quicker than the um, acrylic paint because of the alcohol and the water so I didn't delete the drying t time out of the videos. Doing the same process, misting the surface of the paper with water and then spreading the funky fuchsia around. It, and the texture that you put on while it's wet doesn't really matter because the alcohol is going to change it anyway. And then I do the same thing with the alcohol and splatter it around. 
this time and kind of smaller dots you can see instead of like shaking it I'm tapping it uh, but it still makes really cool effects and this was pretty on its own but on its own but I had something in mind so I wanted it to make it with more colors and kind of more chaotic and doing the same thing making a little binder to separate the acrylic paints the alcohol technique doesn't actually work as well if you don't separate the layers of acrylic. It works way better if you separate them. So again, binder and heat setting it. Then I'm taking the Vibrant Turquoise and doing the same exact process, misting the page with water and then spreading the paint around. And on this page, the left page, I got way too much paint. So I tried to kind of like clean it up a little bit and then spread it around with more water. And then again, I take the alcohol. This time I'm put, I want smaller dots again, so I'm putting it in my hand and uh, then it's kind of like sprinkling it on everywhere. And it looks so awesome! Like I almost wanted to just leave this alone by itself. It's so cool how the alcohol makes the acrylic paint separate. It looks like tie-dyed marble. And then I heat set that and come back. All right, so this is what it looks like, all heat set and dry. It looks pretty cool. I so didn't want to do anything else to this, but anyway. So now I'm going through the Faber-Castell stencil set and uh, that I showed in my haul video, which I'll link in an iCard up above and in the description bar down below. And I'm just picking out some stencils that I think would go good on this art journal page. And I actually um, had some comments about how to make the um, stencils more durable, but I think that like one suggestion was to put gesso on them. Another one was to put gel, uh, gel medium on them. So what I think I'm going to do though is just n skip those steps completely and just go ahead and let the acrylic paint itself make them more durable because I think because acrylic paint is basically plastic, it's going to make the chipboard more durable over time. And also I've had experience um, with the jelly plate and everything with the paper stencils and it definitely, if it can make just regular paper um, more durable over time, then it can definitely make the chipboard more durable. And then in the end, once the chipboard um, is possibly messed up if it ever gets messed up then I can use it as pieces or collage to go into an art journal page. So anyway enough about that I'm using those stencils to um, kind of finish up the background there basically just to have some things to doodle on and to make pop out of the page. This would have also been a really good page to doodle like random flowers because there's a lot of little random flower shapes so if you're a doodler, this would be like a great experiment to just flick alcohol through layers of paints and see, see what images you get up out of it. And as I'm stenciling, I'm, I'm so used to using like Tim Holtz stuff and just kind of, and Dilutions paint and thin coats, just kind of rubbing it around. So here you can see where I'm, I start off like kind of rubbing it around and then I, in the middle of me doing it, I realized, oh no, I need to pounce to make it thick and to go through this stencil. So now I'm using black marble and putting the honeybee honeycomb um, stencil on there. And kind of fading it out a little bit on the edges. And I do that on uh, a lot of these. Some of them not so much, but the, the smaller one I know I do a lot. If you can see how some of the edges are lighter than some of the other parts. And 
and then I am bordering the pages with the black because if you have a page that's really really colorful it is always really good to um, border it with black or put some kind of black um, on the page itself because black kind of makes the other color colors pop out separately um, without looking so dull it kind of makes them brighter if that makes any sense And then I am switching to white linen and um, doing the same thing, going through a stencil, but through the arrow stencil and fading it out in some places and making it uh, more opaque in others. And if you, ha if you have black, it's always good to add white too. You don't have to, but they, they, they will never look bad together. Trying to make a few of these stencil areas kind of come off of the page a little bit. And there is the finished background. So pretty. Alright, so now I'm back and I'm going to doodle a little bit on the page just to make some of these stencil images pop out using the Uniposca Fine Point uh, acrylic pens. Just shaking them up and I'm starting off with the black one and there was like a little fuzz ball down at the bottom of it. Um, so I'm not outlining all of the stencil shapes, I'm just outlining the borders of some of them. So like on this one I'm kind of doing a zigzag shape and you can see already compared to the one I haven't done that it just makes it stand out just a little bit more. And if I did want it to stand out a lot more then I would go around the whole entire shape. I'm doing this to all of the white arrows on the page. Kind of doing the same thing on the triangles, but going in different directions, like a zigzag thing as well, um, but using white on the pink areas. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but before you couldn't really see some of the stencils because of the busyness of the background, so that's why I'm outlining some of them. Get off the oh no, I pushed it away. See how they stand out so much more. Just making sure they're dry before I go in with the next color which would be the pink one. They don't really have names, or if they do, I don't know the names of them. They're, everything's in Japanese on the labels. So doing the same thing with the, um, the same triangle stencil, but outlining the yellow parts with pink, and I'm outlining the underside and then the right side of all the little yellow triangle shapes. Um, it doesn't really make it stand out that well, well so this is probably kind of a waste of time, but since I did it to the first part, I figured I'd finish the rest of them. I'm kind of wishing I would have used blue instead of pink. Even on the black, I think it would have looked better. But it still looks good in the end, so. But now I know. See, you can barely see that pink color, it's so pale. And I kept shaking it up, trying to get it more pigmented, but it um, just kept coming out really light pink. So either use, next time, you, if I do a page similar to this, use 
a teal color or a darker, brighter pink. What's so cool about the background is the way the layers glaze. So not only do I have the green and the yellow and are the blue green, the yellow and the pink, then I get the orange and purples and like teal colors and they all glaze over each other. So they look really cool and some greens in there too. So there's my coat, my coat, my quote, chaos is the law of nature. Order is the dream of man. And I figured that was a good quote for the page because it was very, very chaotic. I had no idea right here, I'm gonna be honest, no idea what colors to use, but it actually turned out pretty good and uh, contrasted with the background so that it would stand out a little bit. And I put, well, you'll see. So now I'm putting um, pumice stone, I think that is what it is. I think I pick it up again and show you. Yeah, pumice stone and weathered wood and putting that on the craft mat and then misting them with a little bit of water and um, getting some color, initial color on the surface of the papers. And that's just Express It Blending Card. Like I've said in other videos, I have an excess of it because I used to have Copic markers and now I don't and I don't have any alcohol markers except for Sharpies and uh, I don't really need Express It Blending Card. So I just use it for everything where I don't want to use my other good paper. So doing kind of like the Tim Holtz um, dabbing and misting type thing. And then I have an excess of ink on my um, craft mat. So I'm taking a tag and just doing kind of the same thing on there and misting it with water to kind of get those bloom effects and uh, a lot of texture. And cleaning up the excess. And then I take Wilted Violet because like I said, in the um, background um, where the, la the layers glazed, it created kind of like a purple color, um, multiple purple colors. So I figured if I kind of blended it in with the uh, weathered wood and the pumice stone, it would create kind of the, some of the purples that I got in the background, but it would still go with the background um, without like popping off of the page way too much. Um, it still went together. So just drying those and you can see it's really pretty texture. That's the reason why I love Distress inks. Like you can create a gorgeous page in an instant and they're just, they're so pretty. So now I'm taking that same Wilted Violet and uh, using the bl blending foam and going around the edges of both the cards to make the purple kind of stand out a little bit more on the outside. I'm done with the wilted violet and just drying that off a little bit because I am about to take some scissors. I couldn't find my Tim Holtz, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the thing that distresses the edges of paper. So I'm just using my scissors to do it. And wiping that off into the trash can. And doing the same thing with the second one. and taking um, black soot, is that what it's called? Yes, and uh, edging the distressed edges. So now that I am done uh, edging those in black, which kind of makes it pop a little bit, I am uh, trying to find a position to put them on the page and I figured slanting, slanting them to the right like in the same order would give the page a little bit of order along with the honeycombs in the back. Um, so I stick with that one because the rest of the background is so chaotic um, and it kind of fits. 
And so I'm using a uh, regular gel and semi-gloss. The um, finish doesn't matter, but I just wanted the thicker gel so that it would pop off the page. And also so that I wouldn't have to kind of go over the surface um, because that would have kind of mixed with the dilutions, I mean with the distress inks and um, smeared them around and I wanted to keep the texture. And that is the finished page after that. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed the video and enjoyed the process and likes the art journal spread. And if you did, please do give me a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.